Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our risen and living Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Back in, I think it was the 80s, there was a uh, commercial uh, that uh, depicted well for us peace on earth. It showed a dog walking into a room, wandering past a fireplace and lying down on the floor. And then a cat came next, uh, laid down next to the dog. And then a mouse uh, entered the room and laid down next to the cat. And a little girl peeked in through the door and he, she saw the, uh, the, the dog and the cat and the mouse lying there on the floor together and she smiled at them. And finally, in the last scene, it showed the dog, the cat, and the mouse all lying down, looking up at a Christmas tree with the words, Peace on Earth, across the screen as Christmas music played in the background. It's really kind of a wonderful Christmas time picture of peace on earth, a wonderful picture time, uh, Christmas time picture of what, uh, of what the prophet Isaiah describes for us today. The animals, uh, or animals that were natural born enemies were lying down together next to each other, getting along with one another, and there was peace. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, the leopard and the goat, the calf and the lion, the cow and the bear, the lion and the ox, all getting along, eating and lying down together, and there's peace. But not only that, but a child is playing with snakes, venomous, venomous snakes without a care or concern in the world, and a child shall lead them. And they, these animals, shall not hurt nor destroy. There's no harm, no danger, no fear, no threat, no worries, no injustice, no enemies, no hate, no war. There's only peace. There's only peace on earth. And all of creation is just lying together with peace and harmony. It's really a beautiful peaceful picture for us. But then reality sets in and we come back down into this real world and that peace kind of disperses and goes away. Animals don't get along with one another. Snakes bite. And in this time of year, the stress of the holidays mounts up as we run around with anxiety trying to find that perfect gift for everybody as we're getting all cookies and the baked goods ready to go and be prepared and checking every single light bulb before it gets cold outside so that we can have the right and perfect decorations. But on a more serious level, war continues in the Ukraine. China terrorizes its citizens. And here in our own country, it seems like a never-ending stream of uh, mass murder and violence. There's, uh, there's uh, high inflation, looming recession, uh, declining bank accounts, and, uh, and loss of jobs. There's broken relationships. There's sickness and death. There's not a whole lot of peace in this world or in our lives. We might be thinking, isn't this supposed to be the time of year where there's peace on earth and goodwill to all? That song of the angels, that proclamation that they sang to the shepherds out in that field near Bethlehem, just seems like a long distance, far away memory. And yet that angel song gets it right. A hum shoot brings peace on earth. The prophet Isaiah had prophesied about this shoot that would come up from the stump of Jesse. And in chapter 10, Isaiah gives us the background that uh, he prophesies that God is going to destroy his nation, that he's going to bring down his people using the powerful and mighty wicked nation of Assyria, that he's going to use this evil people against his, re, uh, his own rebellious people. Ah, oh, Assyria, the rod of my anger, the staff in their hands is my fury against a godless nation, against a rebellious Israel. 
I send to Syria, and against the people of my wrath I commend him to toil, uh, to spoil and plunder, to tread down the people of Israel. But a day would come when God would strike down Israel's wicked enemies, when he would destroy the likes of Assyria and Babylon and all those who had fought against God's people, when the Lord has finished all his work on Mount Zion and on Jerusalem. When he is finished with their punishment, God will punish the speech of the arrogant heart of the king of Assyria, the glory of Assyria's forest and his uh, faithful land the, uh, the Lord will destroy, and the remnant of the trees of his forest will be so few that a child can write them down. And then following the destruction of all of these foreign powers, these foreign nations, these enemies of God, a faithful remnant would return. In that day, the remnant of Israel and the survivors of the house of Jacob will no more lean on Assyria who struck them, but they will lean on the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, And the remnant will return, this remnant of Jacob, to the mighty God. This war-torn nation, this war-torn people of Israel had been laid waste by wicked and evil power in Babylon. And they were left looking like a dead stump, chopped down and destroyed. In a barren land, but from that dead stump would sprout life. From that dead sprout would come a shoot. The promised Messiah who would bring peace on earth. Now Isaiah names uh, Jesse as this stump, the father of King David. And instead of emphasizing David, uh, Isaiah doesn't put the emphasis on, on the pinnacle of Israel's kingdom. It doesn't put it on the pinnacle of Israel's power and prestige during the high time of King David. Instead, Isaiah takes him all the way back to a more humble time. He takes him back to Jesse. He takes him back to a little town called Bethlehem the home of this humble shepherd and his family, not to palaces, but to a manger, not to fine purple robes, but to swaddling clothes. And so from the stump of Jesse comes a shoot that will bring peace on earth. And the shoot is uh, fit to rule with wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, knowledge and the fear, the reverence of the Lord. And he would rule with righteousness and faithfulness. His justice will be right. It won't be swayed by what eyes see and ears hear. It won't be swayed by looks or lies. But those who uh, need justice the most will be vindicated. And those who prey on the poor and the needy, they will be struck down and destroyed. And from the stump of Jesse comes Jesus. Jesus is the one who is sent to bring peace and justice to this world, to make all things right again. Was to make peace with God. To make peace with us and God because of our sins, because we are just like Israel, who rebel against God with our sins. We chase after the false idols of our own makings. We build ourselves up. We do the things that we want to do in the way that we want to do them rather than the way that God wants us to do them. We rely on the world's wisdom to solve all of our problems. And just like Assyria, we puff ourselves up saying, look at me, look at how great I am. Look wonderful and powerful and strong I am. Look at all that I have accomplished. But God's wisdom and counsel was a cross. Jesus died to make us right with God by shedding his blood for us on the cross. 
Jesus' death took care of God's anger and, and, uh, and wrath against our rebellion and, and sin. And on the cross, Jesus forgives us. And he gives us peace with God. And he shall strike the earth and kill the wicked. His resurrection from the grave has conquered death and has laid, weight to, uh, laid waste to the enemies of sin. And even though sin and uh, evil and wickedness of Satan continues to peek its ugly head around uh, in our world today, Jesus will come to make all things right. To make all things new, to put a complete and total end to all evil once and for all. He will restore his creation so that the animals will lie down with one another and, and people will be in peace and harmony with them. He will restore them to paradise, to the time before the fall when all got along. And as we heard a couple weeks ago, through Jesus, God will reconcile himself to, uh, to, uh, will reconcile to himself all things, making peace by the blood of his cross. He will reconcile all things, including animals and people alike. He will restore his his creation to that pre-fall paradise. So from the humble shoot sprouts branches. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. And from the remnant that was reduced down to one, that was reduced down to Jesus, and Jesus alone sprouts his church, sprouts you. And here in this desperate world, in a world that is desperate for peace, we, his branches, can be that peace to the world. And how? Well, we can pray for people in their time of need, in their time of trouble. We can visit the lonely who are homebound and in nursing homes or in the hospital. We can be a shoulder to cry on for those who are mourning the death of a loved one or can give them a simple hug. We can bake cookies for our law enforcement, our medical personnel. Uh, lend a helping hand to someone who's going through some financial troubles. Uh, give a bag of groceries to the contact center, or to a food bank. We can contribute to Zoe Care or another pregnancy crisis center to help that terrified woman with an unplanned pregnancy so that she can have an alternate to abortion. We can volunteer at Pathways, Homeless Shelter, or even here in our own preschool. We can support the animal shelter, because God cares for all of his creation, including the animals, for they will be a part of that new creation on the last day. But the point is that we can be the church, to be the church outside the church, to bring that peace and hope and love and care and compassion to a hurting world around us. We don't need to wait for St. John's to put together some kind of activity or event to bring that peace of Jesus to someone. We can simply do these things and be the church to bring that peace, to lie down with those who need to hear that good news of Christ. Isaiah's prophecy will be fulfilled someday. It'll be completely, uh, completely f uh, fulfilled with complete joy, complete peace, and they will, uh, and an end of all evil will come. And on that day, animal will lie down with animal, and human beings will be uh, right with the world and right with God once and for all. When there will be no pain, no suffering, no war, no violence, no distress but only peace, peace on earth. And as we wait for that day to come, we as the branches of the vine, Jesus, we spread out and share that, uh, that, uh, that peace sprouting out from the shoot of Jesse who brings peace on earth. 
Amen.